Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, I wanted to show you how I use uh, Vim and how I have set up Vim RC and my Vim bundles. And uh, just, yeah, take a look at the tools that I'm using. So I'm going to open up iTerm. This is the terminal application that I uh, prefer. And we'll open up our uh, vimrc file here. This is where you configure Vim. And uh, at the starting at the very top, we'll kind of just go through all the different settings here. The first one is to map my leader key to space. You've got two thumbs. They're right there on the space bar when you're on the home row. And it's really easy to reach the space bar plus any other key on the keyboard. And so I've got that set up um, with my leader key. Here's a bunch of other settings that I use that are really common. And then I also load my vimrc.bundles from another file. So I keep my plugins all organized inside of another file. So let's go take a look at that. So here's my vimrc.bundles. Uh, and at the very top, I use plug. So I'm using uh, vim plugged or bundle or whatever to manage my plugins. FCF is a tool for fuzzy finding files um, that allows you to say like control P and then start typing application controller and then jumping right into the application controller. So that can be really handy. Um, this Mark Weber, uh, TomTom, these are two dependencies of Vim Snipmate and Vim Snippets. So Vim Snippets are the tools that I use for auto expanding chunks of code. And this is actually my own fork of the Vim Snippets plugin. And so we can actually take a look here. If you go into like Vim plugged, Vim Snippets, Snippets, and then any language, so we can actually just like look at this. Um, there's a giant list of languages here. And so the languages that I'm most commonly writing in is like Ruby or Rails or, um, you know, there's a, there's a number that I have added my own snippets to. So if we jump into the Ruby snippets file here and just open up one example snippet for post, this makes it so that I can say post and then hit tab and it'll auto complete this code and it'll sort of like add a placeholder here for me. So if I actually just say like um, Sinatra.rb and then type post and hit tab, then I can say like, oh, my route is, you know, this is gonna be the create thing route, right? Um, that, that makes it really handy. So I can write my own snippets for things that I'm, uh, for blocks of code that I'm writing all the time. Um, so that is Vim snippets. Let's see. Uh, after snippets, we have our commenting. This is so you can say like GCC and that comments out a line. Uh, you can also like select several lines and say GC and that will comment those out. Nerd tree is the sort of like file explorer thing that I have on the left. That's what that plugin is for. AG.vim makes it so that I can like grep for things. So I can do colon AG and then type in some word that I want to find. So application controller or something. And that will search through and find all the files that have application controller and allows you to sort of just jump directly into those. So if I wanted to, I can just jump right into that application controller for the stitch play Rails app that we were experimenting with yesterday. Um, let's see what else we got. Vim polyglot. This I think does syntax highlighting. I used to use Syntastic, but um, this is just uh, another option. Vim test makes it so that I can run uh, tests for many different languages directly from the editor. It's similar to Vim RSpec, which I used to use before. This is a tool from ThoughtBot for running RSpecs, but Vim test is a, like a little bit more generic and lets me run both like jest tests and you know uh, Jasmine tests and also RSpec or mini tests or Really, it's been uh, useful for many, many different um, testing frameworks. So Vim test is great. One dark is my color scheme. Vim Rails is just a, a set of helpful things for moving around inside of a Rails application. And below here, I have a bunch that are commented out that sometimes I'll enable, sometimes I won't. But uh, oftentimes, I want to try to keep the number of plugins that I have enabled really small so that uh, Vim stays really snappy. Um, the more plugins that you add, the more sort of like bulk and overhead you have. So things start to slow down and I want everything to be moving real quickly. All right, so if we jump back into VimRC, let's keep going. So that's the, that's the bundles. Here's where I set the color scheme. We've got some colors, um, some more color stuff, setting um, some more basic settings here around spaces and tabs. And um, then next up, I've got a bunch of commands for automatically formatting. Uh, depending if I'm in like a CSS file, HTML file, JavaScript file, I can just do command, uh, yeah, control F and that will use one of these built-in formatters. Um, I think I'm using this less and less because prettier is auto formatting a lot of stuff for me now. Uh, then here I have like where I set up my preferred tabs and spaces for each of these different languages. Um, I've set HTML as the file type for when I'm working in PHP or EJS or HTML.ERB or Blade or JS.ERB I set to JavaScript. This is so that this, those snippets, those 
um, snipmate snippets for like html.snippets work in all these other languages so that I can just write like really common HTML snippets that will also work in my PHP files or my html.erb files. Uh, some more color stuff. This um, displaying extra white space can be handy if you open up a file and there's a bunch of these in it, then you can like sort of visually see, oh, look, there's trailing white spaces on that line. And we'll talk about how to remove those in just a bit. Again, we have a G that can be handy. Um, we've got nerd tree uh, opening um, and closing. Control P for FCF. So Control P is that thing I, we showed before. I just do Control P and then it opens up this sort of like thing where I can type ahead um, and it will drill down into uh, file paths that have those names. Almost every editor is going to have some equivalent to Control P. So even if you're not using Vim, if you're in VS Code, if you're in Visual Studio for Mac or Sublime or TextMate or any of these are going to have some way to like really quickly jump to a list of files that you fuzzy find or fuzzy search for. Um, and that can really speed up your workflow. So if you're if you're kind of hunting and pecking around in some navigation tree, stop doing that and start using Control P because that will immensely speed up your process. Uh, leader F and leader A, this is so that I can like search everything, like get grep basically or grep for everything given this, um, this the token that's underneath the cursor. It's pretty handy. Some more color stuff. So numbers, talking about numbers. So set number, this gives me the line number that I'm on and relative number gives me these numbers that are relative to the line that I'm on. So right now, this line is line two. If I go down one, then it's line one. If I go down one, then it's line 121. Um, that is really handy when you're trying to, you know, move around based on some number of lines. If I want to jump up to right above this line, I can say 8J or 8K and that jumps me up. 8J, 7J, that jumps me down. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to move around, but not having to do math and being able to just like look at the number, uh, look at the line number that is relative and then using that as sort of your uh, composable commands where you're saying like do this six times or do this um, for the next seven lines down or something like that. That makes it uh, pretty handy. Let's see what else we got here. So leader leader is mapped to control caret. And this makes it so that I can swap between two files that I'm working in. And uh, so if I'm, I was, I was previously in vimrc.bundles. If I hit space, space, then I jump back to vimrc. If I hit space, space, I go back to vimrc.bundles. So if you're kind of toggling between those two, that makes it really easy to work when you're like editing code that's in two different files where you want to see like sort of the full screen situation. I also use control I and control O to move in and out of a stack. So you can say like control I, or can, this is like control O, bring me back bring me back out of the stack and then I can say control I, control I, control I, control I, and that'll bring me back into the stack. Um, so that's the combination of control O, control I, and this leader leader is what I use uh, all the time. Vim RSpec isn't enabled right now. I'm using Vim test instead, but these are like helpful mapping. So I could say leader E and that will run all the specs or leader T and that will run the current spec file. Leader S that runs just one spec. Um, there's also, you can run your Rubocop linter. Again, I don't really use these anymore because I'm just using Vim test. This was a missing import check for Python. I was writing a ton of Django in Python a few years ago. And uh, I, we had like a, basically I had like a pre-commit hook that I wanted to check and make sure that I wasn't missing any imports or didn't have any duplicate imports. So it's using like the S food checker thing under the hood, but that might be handy if you're writing a ton of Python. Uh, again, I don't write .NET a ton inside of Vim, but when I do, it's nice to have that runner this is actually just a bash alias that I have locally that will also specify the uh, a path to this like testing library. Um, and then these two run the uh, Vim test tests. And this is what I use all the time for, uh, for RSpec or Jest or any of those. I just say leader H and that runs the, the, um, the test that's nearest to my cursor, leader L that runs the whole file. And that's kind of like almost my entire testing process right there. Um, let's see what else we got quicker window movement. So this is when you're moving between splits. So I, if I have a split, that's, you know, a vertical split across here and then a horizontal split across there, I can just use, I can hold down the control key and then just use all of those same keys that are on my home row that I would use to move around character by character within a certain, within, um, a single buffer. I can now use those same commands holding down control to move around the um, the splits 
for the different windows that I have open. That can be super handy, especially when combined with Tmux. I don't have my Tmux set up right now, but um, if you have Tmux splits, you can also configure your Tmux, your Tmux um, config so that you can move from Vim into Tmux, uh, Tmux splits. So you might have like uh, Vim splits and Tmux splits all on the same screen and you can move between them with these same commands. Makes it really handy and really intuitive. What else we got? Um, this is just deconflicting some Snipmate stuff. Ah, strip trailing whitespace. So this, the further we get down to the bottom of this VimRC2, the older this is. So some of this stuff I've had for many, many years. Um, tr trim wi trailing whitespace. So every time I open a file, if there's whitespace in the file, it's sort of uh, annoying and also can cause a lot of like churn inside of Git. So I just have something that says anytime I save, so I'm gonna do colon W, it will automatically strip out those new lines so that I don't end up with any new lines or any, I'm sorry, any uh, white space at the end of a line uh, ever. That's pretty handy. Um, let's see what else we got. Spell. Um, okay, so these are these are really common oops commands. So when I do when I hold down the shift key and hit colon to write a command out, I find that it, it is challenging for me to like really quickly lift my pinky, and so I will very commonly accidentally write either a the capital or like I will keep like shift held down for one or two letters after. And so instead of just writing WQ or W or Q or trying to like retrain my brain to always lift my pinky, uh, I've just made like aliases for all of these, um, yeah, mistakes. So yeah, if I'm doing like holding down colon or holding down shift, I hit colon, lift up colon. And then as soon as I hit W, I might not have already lifted up my pinky. And so this can be handy. Um, leader, leader, slash and leader tack I use for, for vertically splitting and horizontally splitting. Um, the slash key, when you look on your keyboard, the slash key actually is also the pipe, which is the vertical bar. And so I kind of think of that as like tack being the horizontal and the pipe being the vertical. And so that's like really easy for me to, to remember, okay, like uh, space bar, space bar pipe is gonna give me a vertical split, space bar tack is gonna give me, or space bar dash is gonna give me a horizontal split. I don't actually use this bottom one very much. I'm gonna take that out. Um, okay, so then the, the, the rest of the file here is for copying and pasting to and from Vim. So this can be kind of challenging, um, but on Mac, you can say like, uh, PB copy is a command on Mac underlying that allows you to copy some text. Um, so here I'm just like, I have the two commands for cutting and copying and, uh, and just copying onto the clipboard so that I can paste in some other application. And then similarly, if I have copied something onto the clipboard and I wanna paste it into a Vim buffer, it's surprisingly weird. You have to kind of like remap a bunch of a bunch of stuff so that you can sort of like paste it. You have to like turn on pasting, paste it, and then turn off pasting. It's, um, it is what it is. So that is my Vim config, my environment config. Uh, I will share also a gist with links to the different files here so that you can take a look at those. I have like a dot .files repo, but I made it private. It's just so nasty. There's tons and tons of cruft in there. I will probably make a new, like cut a new version of that, which I do maybe like every three or four years uh, soon, just so that I can clean stuff up and keep it, keep everything moving quickly. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that's useful and we'll see you next time.